Hi, welcome to season two, episode two of the Superintendent Advisory Board podcast. <laughs> Hello, my name is Isabella Espinoza. I go to Galena Park High School. I am a 10th grader and I am involved in student council and corral. Hi, Isabella. It's so fun working with you on this podcast. My name is Hasmin Jimenez. I go to North Shore Senior High School as a junior. Some extracurriculars I am in is Scarlet's and I am a junior class officer. Thank you, Hasmi. I am so excited to work with you too. It's gonna be so fun. So our topic for today is about impactful life events. So how they have affected us and how we can cope with them. That's a big one. Yes. So Hasmi, um, have you experienced an impactful life event? I have. In winter of 2019, we learned that my grandpa was diagnosed with cancer. And it came as a shock, but it, it was very big. He had to go to the hospital mm -hmm. right away. So it did impact a lot of us. What about you? Have you ever experienced an impactful life event? Um, yes. Uh, last year, my grandmother passed away, and um, it, was, it took a big toll, not just on me, but also on my family. Like, everybody was affected because, you know, she's a matriarch, um, and every, she was so loved by all of us. Um, so I've, like, um, just had to deal with that this past year. I'm sorry for your tough. loss. Yes. I'm sure it's been tough for you, too, though. Um, but have you found a way to heal and learn from that experience? Luckily, after a while and his treatment, my grandpa did get better, but it was hard going to the, to the hospital. But during Christmas, we were able to go and still continue our traditions, like eat some tamales that we made at home Ooh, for him. Yum. So it, it did help to, to try and continue with our normal life mm -hmm. and include him in it. Mm -hmm. What about you? Have you how, how did you heal and learn from this experience? Um, I think this really opened my eyes about you know um, death and how short our life is really, um, and because of that, I've taken you know each day um, a step at a time. You know, we're not always promised you know the next day, so I try to do my best to you know live life to the fullest mm -hmm. every single day. You know, like um, for example, I know like I used to have like a really hard time to get up in the morning, so I but now. I think like, you know, I am so lucky to be even alive. You know, I'm so lucky to go to school, so lucky to have friends and family, you know. So because of that, I've realized like, you know, they're, the little things are what matter and I need to appreciate them and, you know, um, you know, do what I can. Oh yeah, I agree. We are going to move on to our video interviews. So first up, we have Mr. Shane Goforth, um, the head band director of North Shore Senior High. <laughs> My grandfather was near and dear to my heart, um, was incredibly close to me. I spent a lot of time with him uh, in the summer and uh, he was an incredibly talented, intelligent man and he taught me um, so much, you know, about everything. And uh, I remember coming home from work one day as a young band director and my father called me and, and told me that uh, my grandfather had collapsed and my uncle had resuscitated him and that if I was going to see him that I needed to go right now. He lived about four hours away and um, the problem was I had dedicated, uh, obligated myself to a, um, I'm a jazz saxophone player and to my college jazz band uh, and because they were doing a reunion uh, concert that was going to be broadcast live on PBS as part of a fundraiser uh, and recorded and distributed across the country. So I was really torn. I was in a quandary as to well, what would be the best thing to do. I of course immediately wanted to go see my grandfather and um, but after some time of contemplation uh, the answer to me became quite clear that um, if I had left those guys hanging so to speak if I had not gone and done the work and done the gig uh, so I would go and see him uh, if he was able to get out of that bed he would kick my behind so um, I went in and uh, and I did uh, the job and um, then uh, immediately drove uh, you know uh, through the night to get there and uh, and when they opened the hospital ward the next morning, uh, he was uh, he was awake for just a little while, and I got to talk to him and tell him that I loved him. And um, shortly thereafter, um, uh, he passed away. But you know, my family, my friends, uh, who were there, the support system uh, that I'm so uh, fortunate to have, uh, that you know, uh, were there to support me through the you know the entire event of uh, you know that night, and then of course, uh, in dealing with the you know. Uh, the sorrow and, and um, you know the feelings that you have after somebody so near to you. 
passes away. Thank you, Mr. Goforth, for sharing. Um, and if you're watching this podcast, um, just I understand what you're going through. Um, it's really hard. Um, I can relate to you because of like my grandmother who passed away. Um, you just have this remorse. You know, there's so many things that you wanted to do with them. Um, like, for example, I wanted my grandmother to be there at like my graduation and at my wedding. And, you know, it hurts that I won't be able to share that moment with her. Um, so I understand um, what you're going through and um, you just have to take every day step by step, you know, tell your loved ones that you love them because that's really important and we take that for granted. Yes. You never know how much time you have with someone. I also can relate to you, Mr. Goforth, um, going through what my grandfather went through. If, if he had passed, I don't know what we would have done. Uh, we, do, we do try and spend as much time we can with him especially after what happened. And I, I agree with what you said about having to cope with somebody. You you should reach out to somebody. Yes, and, exactly. And like you said, tell people you love them because you never know how much time you have with them. Mm -hmm, yes. Um, and elaborating on what Hasmin said, like when you reach out to someone, um, just, you know, let them like, you could be helping them. You yeah, could be helping you're helping, them. you could be helping them too because you don't know if they also went through this. Um, so in a, in a sense, you're almost like, you know, empathizing with them, like mm -hmm. unconsciously, you know, but it works, you know, and you're building that relationship too. Um, you're creating a stronger um, relationship with that person that you're sharing with. Thank you so much, Mr. Goforth, for including, for contributing to our podcast. And following Mr. Goforth, we have Marcus Fisher. Something that impacted my life heavily is when my great-grandfather died. It was a really hard time for me and my family because he was really close to us and we were very close to him. He was with us for a very long time. And when I got the news and when he died, I was heartbroken, very, it was devastating. He was my favorite grandfather. He saw me and he knew that I would be ahead in life one day. It was, it was a tough time for all of us. And something that helped me get through it, I don't know what got me through it. I just, I just thought that he's not here anymore. I was in denial. I didn't want to believe it. But when I did, I got through with it. I continued on with my life. I didn't talk to anybody about it for a long time until I talked to some teachers two teachers and they told me to think of it as another chapter in my life because not everybody that's here with me is going to be with me forever and I have no control over that and for anyone that's going through that right now they will get better you just got to think positive then sooner or later you will see them again you just got to keep your head up high and you just got to be positive. Think of just be happy that they were here during that time in your life. Thank you, Marcus, for sharing. Um, you're so sweet. You are so right in everything that you said. Um, I know it must have been really tough for you, especially because you had that very close relationship with your grandfather. Um, and you're right. You will get to see him one day sooner or later. And that's like also a great feeling that I have. Um, I love to think that too, that you know, one day I'll get to see my grandmother. Um, and just like keep that in mind when you miss them, I think that's what I do. I'm just like, you know, I may miss her right now, but I'm sure she's watching over over me. And your grandfather is definitely watching over you. Um, he's your guardian angel. I agree with what she says. Whenever you said that uh, you'd like to think about how your grandfather saw a future for you, I think that's very important for anyone who has had somebody pass. Just do things for them. It was really nice that your grandfather, you know, is the one who inspired you, you know, like when everybody else just didn't believe in you and he was the one person who, you know, put that in like motivation inside you, you know, that's key. Um, and that's probably why it hurt, you know, more when he passed away. Um, I also want to talk about how you reached out to the teachers, you know, and that's like so important because not many people reach out to teachers, even though, you know, we hear it on school announcements or like, you know, talk to an adult if you're going through something, you know, a teacher or a counselor, but nobody really does because, you know, it's kind of uncomfortable sometimes because you don't know if that teacher, you know, will understand you, you know, but in the end, teachers are humans, you know, and they go through this. And we just saw with Mr. Goforth, you know, he had a grandfather who he was very close with as well. And, you know, it hurt him just as much as it hurt you. Um, 
So I'm really glad that those teachers could help you move on to the next chapter of your life. That's very important. And I'm very proud of you for, you know, going through that. Um, I know it's tough. I agree, especially after saying how you said about going through the denial. I know a lot of people after after a, an impactful life event happens, that's a that's some part of the process. But the yeah. way to get out of that, like she said, is to talk to somebody and there's resources on campus to mm -hmm. get through that. Yeah, like um, I know you went through the isolation part and that's the denial um, part that Hasmin is talking about. Um, so you, if you feel like you're going through that and you're isolating yourself away from people, like it is good to take time for yourself, but you also need to, you know, not repress it all. You can't keep it all bottled up because, you know, in the end, it's going to end up hurting you. Um, so you need to have those people you can talk to. It doesn't have to be a teacher. It can be, you know, a cousin, um, a friend, um, anybody you just feel close with and safe with. That's really important. Somebody you know, um, will take what you're saying seriously because there's some people that, you know, just won't understand or just, you know, don't have the, um, the right mindset to, you know, help you cope, um, cope with that. So thank you so much to Mr. Goforth and Marcus once again for these moving and heartfelt interviews. Um, now here to further elaborate on the topic, we have our special guest, Mrs. Kirby Rogers Mitchell. Thank you. She is the licensed mental health and support specialist for Galena Park Independent School District. Would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, Mrs. Rogers Mitchell? Yes, I am a licensed professional counselor or a therapist. Mm -hmm. um, I have been a therapist since 2013. Um, I have been with Galena Park School District. This is just my second year, but prior to being here, I was actually a clinical director of a mental health facility for women. So I love mental health. Um, it's really why I do what I do. I believe in ending the stigma against mental health and really supporting individuals just become stronger, more resilient, and understand that they can overcome anything with the support. So you work with like a variety of people, right? Yes, a variety of people. I work with um, children, I work with teenagers, adults, families, couples. I do it all. Yes, so you have a lot of experience. So one of the questions we want to ask are, what are the long-term effects that people face when they have gone through something traumatic? So the first thing I want to say is that I think that sometimes there's a misconception about what trauma even is. Trauma is anything in our lives that creates a strong emotional response. It's not just the big things, right? It's anything that anyone has been through that could cause a strong emotional response of anxiety, depression, fear, any of those things. But when we've been through some of those traumatic experiences, one of the longest, um, or excuse me, one of the most impactful things is how we experience other people. When we have experienced trauma, a lot of times it'll create fear for us. We're scared to build relationships with people. We're scared to take risks. We're scared to just kind of live in the world because now the world feels unsafe for us. Mm -hmm. It feels like we are powerless or helpless and things like that. And so a lot of times people totally change who they are after a traumatic experience because they don't really know how to cope with it. So th this can also lead to mental illness, right? Like something Absolutely, like this. absolutely. Someone could never have had any issues with mental health outside of the normal stressors of life and then have a traumatic experience happen. And then all of a sudden there's extreme anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, self-harm behaviors, anything. These experiences are super intense and can totally change a way a person sees themselves within their experience. Mm -hmm. It's very nice to meet you, Ms. Rogers. What are, as a licensed mental health therapist, what is the best advice you can give to someone who may be going through a life-changing experience? I think the best advice is that you may feel like you're alone, but you're not. There are people in your life that love you, care about you, want to support you. All you have to do is let it be known. Um, I think that sometimes we get scared about how people will perceive us, what their judgments may be, if we're going to be rejected if we ask for help. And sometimes even culturally where we come from, there might be this belief that like what happens at home stays at home. So you don't talk about it, you know. Yeah. And so um, it's it's OK to not be OK and start with start with someone you feel safe with and just share that you're, you're struggling and go from there. That can be a really big first step. Um, and I just wanted to elaborate that because um, I heard recently, or I learned this from someone, that you should, before you talk to that person, just make sure that they're like 
in their correct mental state as well like you don't want to put all this like burdens on them as well absolutely absolutely um you know we want to be able to to talk to people when they're as stable as possible but if Mm -hmm. someone's you know anxious or depressed they might not be stable you know but being able to just say hey there's something that i want to talk to you about is this a good time for you i've Mm -hmm. noticed some things right like allowing that person to say yes Mm -hmm. (laughs) so you're literally respecting that person's boundaries where they might be and also respecting their privacy because when we're talking about mental health stuff there's some there's some deep things that people are going through and so we want to make sure that they feel comfortable talking about whatever it is that's going on but honestly if you know someone that's going through something ask because that might be exactly what they needed a little kick to just say you know what i am struggling here's what's going on so if you know someone it's okay to ask Mm -hmm. thank you so does Galena Park ISD offer any support for students or staff going through an impactful life event? Absolutely. I think that's one of the things I love the most about the district is that this district recognizes the need for mental health services mm-hmm. from students all the way to employees. So when we talk about students, you guys actually have tons of layers of support here. You know, the most recent being Legacy, which is, um, you know, a partnership from last year. And Legacy has clinics on campus that service mental health as well as medical needs. We also have vocal workers. We have the social service department you guys have paraprofessionals on site um, and also the mental health team um, under dr. Haynes the social support mm-hmm. services she has an amazing team that provides you know one-on-one co- kind of counseling and crisis intervention and things like that to students that are in need and then as far as employees last year Galena Park implemented an employee assistance program which um, affords employees and whoever lives within their home six free individual sessions And so I think that that's amazing. So it really is about encouraging employees to get what they need because just like you guys are going through things, so are we. We are not, um, we are not opposed to that. So I think it's amazing. Yeah, that's great that employees also, like teachers also get that because I know it's been really stressful on teachers. Like both of my parents are teachers. Oh, wow. Yes. So like I know it's been like really hard on them to um, also like take care of like, you know, COVID precautions and then like they work with little kids too. Oh so yeah. It's very hard to deal with that. Um and doing everything virtually too, it's like a lot of stress on them. Absolutely. So that's I great think that there's those resources. I, I think that the last that. couple of years have been hard for everybody. Yes, especially yeah, you add is. a pandemic and then you just add the normal stressors of life in general. Like it's it's a lot. What would you say to a student that is afraid to ask or look for help? Ooh, that's such a great question. Honestly, I don't think that I would say anything. I would show them. I think that a lot of times people just need someone to reach into them and they need to know that they're seen. They need to know that they are not alone. And a lot of times actions speak way louder than words. Mm -hmm. And so if you show support for someone, asking them how they're feeling, reaching out to them, they're going to eventually recognize that they're not alone, you know, and you know, that it's okay to, to ask for help and it's okay to allow someone in to help as well. And are there telling signs? Because sometimes you don't know when somebody has gone through a traumatic event. Are there like ways to tell like they're going through something so that you know like when to help? Absolutely. I think isolation is one, you know, where you may have seen them hanging out with a whole bunch of friends at school and then all of a sudden they're not talking to anyone. You may notice that maybe at lunchtime they're not eating very much. You may notice that they're just avoiding the social situations altogether, declining grades. even keep an eye on social media, you know, it's a big thing. And people post sometimes how they're feeling. And so keeping an eye on those things can really be a telling sign. And even, I will say frequency of posting. If someone goes from posting every single day or every single minute to not posting at all, that's a drastic change in behavior. So just noticing those things. Yeah, that was great advice. Thank you so much. Um, And thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, thank you all for having me. (laughs) Yes, thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Once again, thank you, Ms. Rogers Mitchells, for giving us a bunch of valuable information, especially since you have worked with a variety of people from teachers and students. Mm-hmm. To sum up everything we've talked about, I want to say that anyone can be affected, even if there is no history of mental health issues. Yes, um, mental health issues um, don't have to be, you know, common for you know this to occur. Anybody can be affected by. It. Um, any situation in their life, any event, um, just like a, a grandfather or a grandmother um, passing away, like you can't control that. That is out of our control. Um, and it can happen anytime, anywhere. 
Um, also with the age gaps, as we saw with our interviews, Mr. Goforth is already teaching and Miss and Marcus, Marcus, he had the same, he went through the same event that Mr. Yes, Goforth like went through. They're, even though they're different in ages, um, they still went through the same thing. They still had a hard time, you know, going through that. Um, and we just need to take that in account um, that just like adults, you know, go through their own stuff too. And, you know, so do um, kids. We're all affected by similar situations. Um, so another thing we wanted to say is you shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. Not everyone is okay and you know it's okay to not be okay you know and it's important to realize that to come to that realization that you know I need I need help you know. Um, I feel like some people think like oh they're being weak and it's not true you know like everybody has a weakness everybody. Um, on the outside we may all look happy but you know we were all affected by something one way or another. Make sure people are comfortable um, when you're going to them to ask for help though. Um, you wanna make sure that they're also in a good um, mental capacity. You don't wanna overwhelm them with your own situations and um, your own experience because then that also might trigger, you know, something that they're, you know, going through. Um, and it just won't be good for either of y'all. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really important that if you see somebody going through a tough time, just reach out to them, ask them if they're okay, and that mm -hmm. could really help them, help them in their own situation. Yeah, like Mrs. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Roger Mitchell uh, mentioned that if you see somebody, you know, in the cafeteria eating alone, you know, in their isolation, they could be going through something. Um, that's not saying like everybody who eats alone is going through something, <laughs> but. Um, you know, it's a telltale sign, especially somebody who's, you know, a social person. Um, or they just look sad, you know, during class and they're, they're not doing their work, they're eating a little bit. Um, you know, those types of things are, are signs and symptoms that they may be going through something. And even if they're not, it's still good to ask, you know, like, hey, are you okay? Like, um, you know, are you going through anything? If so, do you want to talk about it? Um, it's just good to um, approach them and, you know, make them feel comfortable about expressing their feelings to you. Thank you once again for joining us. It's been a pleasure making this podcast for y'all, and I hope that you have learned something. Yes, this has been so much fun, and I'm really going to take all the things that I've learned here today um, and apply them to my own life um, because we have all gone through something. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the advice Mrs. Rogers Mitchell gave us. Um, so make sure you tune in for the next episode, February 2022. Um, and happy holidays from the Superintendent's Advisory Board. Woo! Happy holidays!